Uh, this is the beginning of some semi-urban training for a uh, new handler that had not worked a bloodhound in this type of environment before. And notice how when the dog comes out, it's immediately looking for the, the trail of the subject. This trail is, is single blind. Um, I know where the subject went to, I just don't know exactly how they got there. Uh, so I'm going to do my best to interpret exactly what happened based on uh, what the dog does with uh, body language. As uh, the handler's trying to get the dog started, she's having a little bit of difficulty determining how to present the scent article to the dog. One thing that's important to understand is, is that the dog doesn't see that towel quite like we do. And the other thing is, is the dog actually already had the trail. Uh, so the scent article itself may have been a little bit redundant, but still timing should be such that you move to that scent article a little quickly, a little quicker, and uh, try to present it in a little bit better fashion. Timing is really crucial to get that uh, start going nicely right out of the gate, uh, dogs are moving so quick uh, that they'll actually overshoot the turn or the start of the trail. Um, the starts of the trails are always a little bit of a scent pull, so getting the exact tracks can, can sometimes be a little bit difficult. Uh, you notice right there a good head pop, dog picks up the trail really nicely, um, comes off a little bit, but circles back and you'll see her pick it up one more time right here. Working intersections and city streets can be awfully hard for a new handler uh, who's never done anything quite like this before. Um, you've got to concentrate on several things. Number one, the dog being an odor, making sure you don't influence it. Then number two, making sure that the dog stays safe as it approaches the road. The dog's completely an odor and has really no interest in that car coming by. So you have to be careful. Uh, make sure that the dog doesn't hit the road too hard, uh, doesn't get hit by the car. Um, and at the same time, don't influence the dog in what it's doing very difficult situation. That's your trail right there. Come slow it down a little bit. Take you, follow her. Just slow it down a little bit. Watch this head pop coming up. This is the dog detecting the odor on the other side of the street and immediately running for it. I like this head down behavior with the dog actually picking the odor up right on top of the concrete. This is kind of rare. Many dogs will detect the trail on the other side on the soft surface and immediately want to run for it. Dare picked up the odor on the concrete and followed it across. Uh, the only reason why the dog came up suddenly was because the handler put line tension on the lead as she saw the car coming, thinking that she shouldn't cross the road right then and there because of the vehicle. I encouraged her to hurry up and get across the other side. We have plenty of space, plenty of time, and I didn't want to unduly influence the dog. This is where lead handling has a little bit of an impact on the trail. Actually, not just a little. It has quite a bit. The dog circles to the left, then circles to the right. The lead goes up underneath the uh, leg and then also the neck of the dog. And as the handler's trying to get it off, the dog's still trying to work and follow the trail. It's actually quite nice. The problem is, is that it pushes the dog off the turn somewhat um, and creates a little bit of a problem. Um, the lead handling here is really crucial when the location is a scent change. And th that's exactly what occurred here. We didn't know it until later, uh, but the subject had actually turned in the left there, followed the uh, grass line, and had not come out on the road. But look how the dog's working. Obviously an odor. Uh, my guess is working the fringe of the scent trail quite nicely. Um, and actually has a very good direction of travel. Again, the handler influences the dog with lead handling because of this vehicle coming forward. You can see that the dog wants to be on the other side of the road. Good job, let her have all that lead. Watch the body language coming up. The dog's going to detect some stronger odor here on the grass. This is where the subject actually come out and hit the concrete. Uh, it's stronger odor, the dog's a little bit more excited. Um, doesn't quite know what to do with the direction of travel. Um, it appears she just picked up the actual physical track right there, but still trying to determine a good direction of travel. Again, the lead goes underneath the leg and then underneath the neck of the dog, which influences what she does and ultimately, I think, influences the outcome. Don't chase her until you let that lead go. Now, what do you think she's this spot over here um, was actually right where our subject was hiding for the handler's dog uh, not more than an hour before. Uh, the reason why Dare gravitated to that was because of the strong scent pool. Watch the head pop coming up and the detection of the actual physical track of our subject. Now, the only problem with this is it's now a backtrack. 
Um, Dare is following this backtrack very, very nicely, probably right on top of the footprints of the subject. Um, the reason why this occurred, I think, is because of a lot of the lead handling that had happened with her. Um, there was some checks and some tugging at crucial times on the trail when Dare was trying to make a decision on direction of travel. Um, as we had come into that area to begin with, off of blown air scent um, to the actual physical track, it was a little bit of a difficult spot for Dare. Good lead handling may have helped that a little bit. Uh, perhaps she not, may not have succumbed to this backtrack the way she did. Here, and when she got sucked into that exit trail, she hit that hard physical track and backtracked on it. But now we're on cement again, and that was better odor. Let's see what she does when she gets to this intersection. See how she's getting a little bit more excited? Yeah. And if she gets sucked in there one more time, I'm almost... Ooh, watch her, watch her. Yeah. This is the exit trail where we backtracked from before, and now she picks up the good direction of travel. Get behind your dog, over here. There you go, good work. Slow it down, her head's up, no need to run. There you go. Best thing always to do is keep a nice even trot. Speed is not essential when you're working in an urban environment. Um, especially with a lot of concrete, sometimes it can be detrimental. You can never keep up with the dog and travel at its pace. It's better to keep at a pace that you can manage and at the same time make sure that the dog is continuing to work. This blind corner is really, really tough because it's very difficult to see if any traffic's coming. You got a lot of loose lead and what I'm asking the handler to do is kind of quarter out to the right so she can view traffic and at the same time keep an eye on her dog. This is one of the few times when I try to have handlers um, not stay behind the dog but actually view for a little bit of traffic. Uh, she's just learning how to manage some of these situations and it's not exactly easy. Let her go. Good. What I'm having the handler do here is a little bit of a correction that we had from the last street crossing. I told her to just allow the dog to have all the lead, get across to the other side of the road at, at its own pace, and try to detect odor on the other side without influencing with any line checks or line pulls. This is important because inter intersections can be tough. We have a tendency to want to push to the other side as quickly as we can and sometimes push the dogs right off the track. Get ready for some body language changes. You're going to see the dog drop, slow down to a creep in a couple places, uh, and lower the body stance. Uh, this is due to a little bit of nervousness around some new conditions. The truck's motor's running. Um, we've got some new things that she's never encountered before here. It's creating a little bit of a problem for her. So what we do is we just motivate through. Some words of encouragement, just making sure she doesn't get too spooked and can finish the trail. Follow her. Just, she's a little nervous, but watch her. Don't say anything, let's just see how she reacts. Oh, good girl! Go ahead and praise her and give her some treats. Good girl, you did it! Hey, so when you um, were walking down the road, did you cut into that grassy area, walk down the grass, and then came back out that trail? Yep. Okay. Yep.